Today I'm going to show you how I put a switching output jack on the back of this practice amp so that I can plug it into a larger cab. I'm going to tell you all about why it's a good idea. And can I just say I am absolutely loving my 15 watt half stack. So if you're working with a small practice amp and you're unsatisfied with the sound and maybe even the volume level, it might turn out that you need a bigger speaker or more speakers before you need a bigger amplifier. And you can save a lot of money by adding those speakers before you worry about going out and buying yourself a 100 watt amp, a 50 watt amp, something that you won't need for your home or studio use. So let me show you how I set this one up to be able to drive a 412. So look, first things first. Small speakers. Small speakers are going to give you small sound, especially because practice amps, they're not just giving you a small speaker, they're giving you a small cheap speaker. You know, they're trying to keep the cost of a practice amp down. They want to make sure that there's an entry level into the hobby so that you can come back for more later. So they're giving you these speakers that don't have the same frequency response as the bigger, more expensive speakers. You know, they don't have the same warmth and the same low end response as the larger cabs do. Even the most generic 12 inch guitar speaker Speaker, will probably have a better response than the average, you know, six inch practice amp speaker. Now, the simplest way to fix that is to just add an output jack to an amp. You'd be surprised how few watts it takes to drive a bigger speaker. So if you've got a practice amp that's got a six inch speaker, an eight inch speaker, don't even worry about whether it's able to drive a 12 inch speaker, it can. Now the simplest way to do this is to literally just unplug the leads at the speaker and plug them into a standard quarter inch jack, the kind you would use as an output jack for your guitar. For the few bucks you'll pay for a pack of these, you can take the speaker leads off of your practice amps speaker. You can plug them onto here, make sure you got your positive and your negative correct. And then instead of having that speaker connected, you can now plug in an external speaker cap. That'll get the job done right there. It is a reversible modification, but you also will lose usage of the speaker that's in the cab in the meantime until you reverse it. And it's just, it's not quite as convenient. It's not quite as permanent. To step up the game and do something a little bit better, a little bit nicer, a little bit more permanent, you can do what I did with my Fender Frontman 15. You can add a switching output jack. So now I've done a permanent installation of a switching jack on the back of that practice amp so that when there is no cable plugged into the back of it, it uses the combo amps small speaker. But when I plug in a speaker cable, that's going to another speaker cabinet, it turns off that internal speaker and it runs the signal out to the other cab instead. And that's what I want to show you. And it's a simple enough installation. Just buy one of these switching quarter inch jacks. I bought mine off of Amazon. I bought a bag of like 20 of them. And I like these plastic cased ones because they're isolated from ground. You do have to be careful if you get the metal cased ones because the metal casing is also a ground location. So you want to make sure if you're attaching it to an amp chassis or anything like that, that you are properly grounded. You don't have to worry about it as much with these. You just have to make sure that your wires are going to the right place on the right lugs. Now, once you've got this jack, you just have to identify which side of the jack is the switch side and which side is getting disconnected from the circuit when the jack has something plugged into it. On this jack, this side here is the short legs. These are the ones that disconnect from the circuit when something is plugged in. And we can see this by plugging a cable into it. And we see that these other leaves lift up off of the short legs and connect to the plug instead. Now we attach the speaker leads here on the short side with the ground wire to the sleeve lug and the hot wire to the tip lug. And then we attach the matching leads from the amp to the same lugs on the other side. That's all there is to it. You're just wiring basically straight across the jack. Now what we have without a cable plugged in is essentially the same signal path that we had before. Now these leads from the amp travel across this jack without interruption to the speaker. But when you plug in a speaker cable, this side disconnects and the amp leads are shunted to the speaker cable instead. And then from there, all you have to really do is find a reasonable place to drill a hole so you can mount that jack. Like I said, with these plastic ones, you can really install it anywhere, whether that's the metal amp chassis or part of the wooden cab or whatever, as long as you're not creating, you know, long coils of wire to create hum. Let me add a little bit of warning for the tube amp users. If you are familiar with tube amps with separate cabinets, you're already familiar with the fact that you need to match impedance of the speaker loads, 
but if you have been only using combo tube amps and you're unfamiliar with the concept, let me be the first to tell you that you want to make sure that you match the speaker load impedance with the output impedance and you can cause damage to your amp if you don't. This is mostly only for tube amps. Solid state amps don't have this problem in the same way. They just won't work quite as efficiently. But with tube amps, you can actually cause damage to your amp. So make sure that you find out what the impedance of your speaker is and only plug into cabinets that match that for your safety and for your amps safety. I've only been doing this with solid state amps so really at worst I might not quite get the same volume or not quite the same headroom that I would out of a matched impedance speaker. So before I get to the demo portion of the video let me let you in on a little bit more technical information and why you want to do this and why it works. The first thing that you need to understand about amps and wattage and loudness is is that double the wattage does not double the volume. Wattage is non-linear and especially in relation to volume and the way that amplifiers work and the way that the power is measured you actually need to have 10 times the wattage to double the volume. So the difference in apparent volume between a 10 watt amp and a 100 watt amp is only double which on the one hand is great to have in some places on the other hand when's the last time that you maxed out the volume on a 100 watt amp right? So you can do a lot more than you might think you can with 10 watts and a lot of the limitation that you may have experienced in volume or headroom or anything like that with smaller amps is because of that smaller speaker because you're only driving so much air volume with a small speaker. So because of all of this a bigger apparent volume increase will not come from increasing wattage but will come from having your amplifier driving larger speakers or more speakers. Now this is because more speakers are going to have more surface area which is going to push more air around and shaky air is what we perceive as sound. So the more air that we push around with more speakers the more volume we're going to get and that's going to show a lot quicker than increasing your wattage. I've actually plugged in 10 watt amps into the 412 that are too loud to use for home use no matter how low I turn them. Uh, they just don't get quiet enough when you're pushing so much speaker. Now, in addition to the big volume boost, you're also going to improve your tone while you're at it. These bigger speakers, they have a more balanced and a warmer frequency response. They're going to sound better than the tiny, tiny speakers that have trouble replicating those lower end sounds. For recording purposes, even hooking up a little practice amp, a 5 watt, a 10 watt, a 15 watt practice amp up to a 112 speaker cabinet or a 212 speaker cabinet is going to help you get that better balanced tone without needing to go for that huge volume boost because just putting the 12 inch speaker on is going to give you that wider frequency range and you can save a ton of money this way if you shop around. Used 412s are wicked cheap. I just learned this recently. See the cheapest new ones are like 600 bucks and those are like the cheap 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 ones. Like the cheapest decent one is $900, $1,000 but there's a lot of people who they buy them and they tour with their 412s for a while and they beat the crap out of them and then they're just not looking pretty anymore and they sell them off. They're left at Guitar Center for a hundred bucks. There's plenty of people who buy a 412, buy themselves a hundred watt half stack when they're not leaving their house or not leaving their studio and they don't really realize how loud that's going to be and then they end up offloading it for a smaller amp that is more manageable for what they're using it for. And then you end up again with these cabs super cheap. I've seen a few on Craigslist for like $100 to $200. This one, I bought this Fender 412. It's actually in great shape. I spent $150 bucks on it and Guitar Center shipped it to me. This is wicked cheap. I got a lot more volume and a lot more sound quality out of this $150 purchase than I would have from walking into a store and buying myself any 60 watt, any 100 watt amp that was on the wall. Of course, there is a limit to how much speaker any given amp can drive. And also there is something to be said for more wattage providing more headroom. If you're getting to a point where you are cranking that 10, 15 watt head up to eight, up to nine, you're gonna be limiting how much headroom you have and it's probably time to upgrade to a bigger amp. But this is going to serve you for a long time. I mean, my main amp right now is this 412 that I'm driving with the 15 watt Fender Frontman R. And I mean, this thing is pretty awesome. Let me show you a little bit of a demo. <laughs> That's 
it's mostly in tune. Now you compare that tone to the 8 inch. So let's play around with dirty tones. So in the future, I'm going to be doing this with smaller and smaller amps and see how little it really takes to drive a 412 because now I'm just curious. Now I just need to know. I'll also have a video out relatively soon about this weird thing that I built. It's a little four string diatonically tuned thing. It's similar to the dulcitar that I made out of that black strat a few videos back. So if you want to see some more of my audio shenanigans, please subscribe, check me out on Instagram, and uh, I'll have more projects for you in the future. All right, I'll see you around.